MRIs use protons, which are abundant in the human body. All protons spin, creating a small magnetic charge. When a strong magnetic field is introduced, as is the case in an MRI machine, the protons align with that field. The MRI technician then introduces a radio frequency pulse that disrupts the proton and forces it either into a 90 degree or 180 degree realignment with the static magnetic field. Since the radio frequency pulse pushed the proton against its nature, once this pulse is turned off, the protons realign with that magnetic field, releasing electromagnetic energy along the way. The MRI is able to detect this energy and is able to differentiate various tissues based on how quickly they release energy after the pulse is turned off. A CT scan is an X-ray procedure that creates cross-sectional images with the help of computer processing. CT images are more detailed than conventional X-ray images and can reveal bones as well as soft tissue and organs. A conventional X-ray uses a fixed tube that sends X-rays in only one direction, while a CT scanner uses a motorized X-ray source that shoots narrow beams of X-rays as it rotates around the patient. There are special digital X-ray detectors located directly opposite the X-ray source. As the x-ray passes through the patient, they are picked up by the detectors and transmitted to a computer. Image slices can either be displayed individually in two-dimensional form or stacked together to generate a three-dimensional image that can reveal abnormal structures or help the physician plan. A PET scan creates 3D images of the body. It does this by using radioactive tracers, which are usually administered to a patient through intravenous injection. The tracers are made up of carrier molecules that are tightly bonded to a radioactive atom called an isotope. The carrier molecule can interact with or bind to specific proteins or sugars in the body. The carrier molecule that will be used depends on what the doctor is looking for. If she suspects cancer or is monitoring a known cancer's growth, she may use FDG, a modified form of glucose, which gets absorbed by tissues. When tissues absorb a lot of glucose, it may indicate a cancerous tumor. The radiation from the tracers poses little danger to the patient since they quickly pass out of the body. The isotope produces small particles called positrons, which interact with surrounding electrons. This interaction results in the complete annihilation of both particles, releasing two photons that speed off in opposite directions. The detectors in the PET scanner measure these photons and use this information to create an image of the distribution of FDG in the body.